And on that note, I'm really pleased to introduce our closing speaker, uh, Sione, Director of the Health Promotion Island, uh, Aotearoa. He's also IUH for Communications and Chair of its Global Working Group on Waiora, Planetary Health and Human Wellbeing. So Sione, welcome. And we're really looking forward to your presentation. Thank you very much, Mark. And it's wonderful to connect with you, although it's online. And, um, and it's an honor to be uh, here with you all um, today. Tihei Mariora. Nga hauefa nga mana nga reo. Rau rangatirama tena koto, tena koto, tena koto ka toa. Tapu moe afia toa maafmafi, tapu moe hou eiki, moe tangata i whonua, kaya taake whangamonu a hoku koroa. And may I pay my respect to the traditional holders of the land and express my gratitude to the organizers for your kind uh, invitation. It's an honor and, and a privilege. Good morning, good afternoon, uh, good evening. It's Atamaria here. Good morning from Aotearoa, New Zealand. Uh, as Mark has uh, uh, mentioned in his uh, uh, warm, uh, wonderful uh, introduction, I'm Sione Tuitahi. I'm the Executive Director of the Health Promotion Forum of New Zealand. I'm also co-chair of the IUHPE Global Waking Group on Waiora, planetary health and human well-being. Uh, originally, I'm indigenous from the kingdom of Tonga. Uh, Aotearoa, New Zealand has been my wonderful second home. But because of my work, my travel and my faith, I regard myself as a global citizen. Uh, the world is but one country, humanity, its citizens, and we are fellow global villages. So greetings, uh, everybody. I have been asked to address our symposium today from an indigenous planetary health perspective and based on the experience of our IUHBE's global working group. And uh, my sincere apologies if I repeat things that have been mentioned uh, already. But as you know, um, as teachers, fellow educators, we are in the business of sustaining the health of uh, planet Earth. So reusing, recycling, repeating is more than welcome. But also there's a, a, a wonderful story of a uh, well educator and leader who visited Montreal where our, con our symposium being um, part of. Um, and he was asked why he was repeating things. And he asked back, uh, to his uh, student. What did I repeat? And the student said, let me have a think. And the teacher um, said, exactly that's the point. Uh, repeating is good, help our memory. Uh, but first, I'd like to, to acknowledge and honor the work and pay my respect to the wonderful and excellent work that has been shared with us um, already in this symposium and it's years of hard work of uh, this network. I have a very minute claim to make that I made some very small contributions here in Aotearoa, New Zealand uh, to our local chapter here in the response to the Okanagan um, charter when it was launched in uh, 2015. I also wish to pay my respects to those who have shared their basket of knowledge uh, before me. Uh, here in Aotearoa, we have a saying, uh, your basket of food and my basket of food, and together we will have a, a great feast. And if I may make an observation, you know, the words of uh, wisdom of the Okanagan Charter uh, makes it very clear that your group and our group 
are on the same um, journey on planetary health and also, as Matt said earlier, on indigenous knowledge and the well-being of Mother Nature. And while our indigenous approach to the well-being of Mother Nature has been a process of many decades, building on the wisdom of our ancestors in this part of the world, it started within the IHB family at the 2004 IHBE World Conference in Australia. And we followed that through at the Vancouver 2007 conference of IHBE. We reached a milestone with the co-hosting of the 2019 um, IHBE World Conference here in Aotearoa, New Zealand by our organization, the Health Promotion Forum of New Zealand, Runanga Whakapikiake Idehawara or Aotearoa. And post-conference, we established our global waving group on Waiora planetary health, which leads the ongoing development and implementation of the two legacy statements of the 2019 conference. And one of these uh, twin statements focuses specifically on indigenous perspectives on planetary health. Uh, we have made some good progress within IUHBE for example, the next five years, the strategic plan, um, the um, elements, key components of the two statements are uh, enshrined within the strategy of HPE. We also to date uh, have been providing uh, support to our colleagues at the WHO uh, at the recent conference last December. We contributed to some of the sessions and also the drafting of the uh, Geneva Charter for Wellbeing. In fact, some of our WHO colleagues are co-presenting with us uh, at the IHB a couple of days uh, that we will again see each other at. But uh, for today, I have only one uh, message, one major message. The planet is the new setting. And therefore, we need to collaborate towards a transformational elevation of our collective consciousness and a shift towards a new paradigm. And this message echoes the, of course, the Ottawa Charter, the Okanagan Charter, the Geneva Charter of Wellbeing, of course, and the two legacy statements from Rotorua in 2019. And more broadly, it, ampli it amplifies other charters as well. Uh, the Sao Paulo Declaration, uh, 1992, there was the Agenda 21. In fact, we can go back some 50 years to the Limits of Growth Report 50 years ago. And as Matt mentioned earlier, uh, for indigenous peoples, we go back to time immemorial. Our global working group on Waiora Planetary Health we understand planetary health as defined by the Lancet Commission 2015. And also with the two legacy statements that I mentioned before. And we adopt these two frameworks because they are comprehensive and are inclusive of science, ethics, spirituality, and indigenous knowledge. And as you know today, the convergence of global challenges environmental catastrophes, economic crisis, geopolitical conflicts, just look at Ukraine, Yemen, Afghanistan, for example, and pandemics, illustrates very clearly that we are an interdependent, one system, one human family, and we are inextricably one with mother nature. And so we have reached actually the, the latest and perhaps the final stage of our human evolution. Our journey is one human family on our spaceship planet Earth. You know, we have come a long way from the local to the national and to the global and planetary stage uh, today. But yet, and still we, we chain ourselves to 
the increasingly obsolete notion that sovereignty sovereignty lies entirely within the state, when in fact the state is an autonomous part and is part of the complete system, planet Earth. And again, we look to Ukraine and see our inability to think together as a one human family, as a one planet system. You know, to use an analogy, our planet is on fire. We can no longer afford to focus entirely and only on our individual rooms. We must also raise our consciousness and work together to save our one home. We have to elevate our consciousness and, and followed by action, as has been discussed earlier by Monica and, and Mark and, and Matt. We need to raise our consciousness to the level where we deeply understand and deeply embrace that the earth is but one country and humanity its citizens. And for indigenous peoples, we have always seen life as one system, a relational interconnected web. And we are one with mother nature. And when mother nature is healthy, uh, we mere mortals are healthy as well. And it's our notion of Fenua Ora or Fenua Ola, healthy planet, healthy people. And so, as Guterres said, the UN Secretary General two years ago, indigenous peoples are stewards of 80%, 80% of the world's biodiversity on land. And it is time to hear their voices, reward their knowledge, and respect their rights. The Geneva Charter also echoes this call, calling for a centering of indigenous knowledge and leadership. And the same call, as I mentioned earlier, has been made by our twin legacy statements of 2019 IHBE conference in Rotorua. And so a, a big question then, what can centers for higher learning, universities, indigenous academies, faith-based hubs of knowledge and learning, what can we do? And so here are some uh, food for thought. Well, universities and other centers, you know, they can be leading protagonists of the advancing the new planetary setting and leading the paradigm shift. It is not just a mind shift. It is also, as indigenous peoples see it, it is also more importantly, a hard shift. We can research objectively, look at the emerging and converging diverse knowledge systems around the world. There is science, there is knowledge of the East, the knowledge of the West, the knowledge from the South and the North, and of course, indigenous knowledge. We can explore emerging values from the new global setting, examine the dynamics of the shifting from the autonomous parts to the collective global sovereignty of the whole. We can reimagine a new curriculum that can create a healthy planet and healthy people. And we can teach new interdisciplinary domains that can create Fenuaora and Fonuaora, healthy planet, healthy people. And so again, with some more food for thought. We need to elevate our consciousness to a new setting of one planet with one people and interdependent system. We need to expand our understanding as called for by the Geneva Charter for Wellbeing, our understanding of health and well-being to include the spiritual and ecological dimensions. As you know, the Ottawa Charter talks about ecological well-being, but it has been over the decades largely ecologically blind. We need to reset and apply new principles and values such as reciprocity, justice, love, collective good, unity and diversity, and of course, respect among us fellow human beings and 
respect for Mother Nature. We can remote, reestablish, and rebuild our human systems, our political and socioeconomic systems, and of course, our natural systems to be ethically, environmentally, and economically sustainable. In short, we need to transform into a new paradigm of one planet, one humanity. And this network has been a beacon and an exemplar of what we can lead and what we can do to co-lead and engage in a society, societal movement that is multi-sectorial, as mentioned already, and multi-level. It is about the we, not the I anymore. It is about the whole, not just the part. And uh, to round up and to wrap up um, uh, this uh, brief address, um, uh, I'm delighted to share with you a beautiful picture of the Uruwera. Some of you who um, came to uh, Aotearoa 2019 and participated at our conference there, uh, you may recall uh, the leader of uh, Tuhoi, uh, one of our iwi here, indigenous peoples, Tamati Kruger, who spoke about the Uruwera. It's their home, the home of Tuhoi people, famous for its lakes and forest and beauty. Uh, it, has, it became a legal person in 2014. Increasingly here in Aotearoa, we recognize and we honor the rights of Mother Nature. And, and finally, again, looking around what is happening to our fellow human beings in our one human family, uh, peace is what we need. Uh, peace with Mother Nature, as Guterres has called for, the defining task of the 21st century is to make peace with nature. And if I may add, First and foremost, we need to make peace with each other. And let me conclude with um, a word of wisdom from uh, the teacher and the same leader who visited Montreal 110 years ago, Abdul Baha. And he said, when a thought of war comes, oppose it by a stronger thought of peace, a thought of hatred must be destroyed by a more powerful thought of love. In the Ottawa Charter, peace is the first prerequisite, the first condition for health and well-being, the first determinant. It is echoed more strongly in the Geneva Charter for well-being. And with those few words, Noreira tenakoto, tenakoto, and thank you again for the opportunity and the honor to share some thoughts with you. Thank you.